Good evening. Welcome to part three of this uh, series on uh, writing code with R using tidyverse functions and base functions. So, um, just a little recap. I've been uh, doing these videos where I showed you how to write a very simple genetic algorithm using tidyverse functions. And tonight we're going to take a look at the exact same, well, mostly exactly the same uh, algorithms but using only base functions. And um, yeah, let's get started because I think the code itself is not going to be super interesting. However, these videos and especially a discussion on Twitter that I started like as a, as a meme, obviously people nowadays only communicate in memes, um, actually sparked a very interesting discussion and two blog posts uh, of mine that I wrote. Uh, so I will be talking about one particular issue that really be became evident when I was doing this, this little experiment over here. So when we um, use a generic algorithm, the first uh, algorithm that we need, or the first piece of the puzzle, is um, something to initialize a random population. So over here, uh, I have my init pop function that uses tidyverse functions. And here I have my init pop base, and it's basically the exact same thing. The only important difference is that um, this one, so the one from, from base, returns an array. Okay, that's important. It doesn't return a data frame unlike the version from uh, the Tidyverse version. It returns an array. But apart from that, it's mostly the same approach. I use repli a replicate over here uh, instead, of, uh, instead of rerun. Uh, but it's the exactly the same approach, right? Then I need to evaluate my candidates. And this is where things got quite interesting because this was, I, I, I can show you uh, at the end how I did it, but this I um, this is the, so once I wrote my, my whole thing, I uh, tried to find out where it was running slow. And this is, this was the function that really ran very slowly, which was evaluating um, on a per row basis, or yeah, evaluating my candidates on a per row basis. So computing over rows. So the tidyverse and R in general um, are great for computing over columns, but computing over rows is tricky. So this is over here the uh, tidyverse approach. There are others um, which I will discuss, and uh, this is the other one. It uses also tidyverse functions, but uses pmap. And this is the base one, which simply uses la la apply. So this is my array, and this is the margin. So margin equals one means I want to compute over rows. Margin equals two would mean that I want to compute over columns. So this one that uses pmap, as you will see at the end, is much faster, much, much faster. Um, and this was a, a suggestion from, um, from a person on Twitter because there was this whole discussion uh, which sparked these uh, two blog posts that I will link in the description with all the details. So I won't be talking too much about it now, but basically here uh, I titled this uh, the quest for faster row oriented workflows, which is, uh, which is um, a little, um, I can't find the word anymore. It's inspired, let's say, by the Summoning Salt YouTube channel. Um, and, and basically, uh, the idea here is that I discuss exactly this problem. I want to evaluate this function over rows. How do I do that fast? So I, you know, I use a loop. I use the apply, uh, you know, the base, the apply version. Maybe let me zoom in a little bit. Then I, you know, and then I, I tweet this. Well, this was before actually. This was the, almost a month ago now, and people discussed it. It was really, really interesting, and they suggested other approaches. So this was the approach that I used before, the very pure tidyverse approach. And then came the other approaches. And what was especially interesting was here yeah, an approach with asplit, which uh, this was one that I, I discovered, which works quite well and runs quite fast as well. And then there was uh, this approach that was suggested, and this actually came in the second blog post, so I, then I here I benchmark everything, and we see that uh, well, basically, you know, the loop is the, the slowest, row-wise is slow, 
And if I remove the loop, you see row wise here, the blue one is quite slow. And then between the red, which uses laply and map, um, you don't find a lot of differences. Uh, so map uses a split and map. Then came other suggestions. This was the second uh, blog post called again speed running row oriented workflows. So basically, what I, I said, the, this discussion you know, sparked a new, or I invented a new game, which is basically you know applying functions as fast as possible. So speed running, like in speed running video games, uh, and um, basically. Here, people continued suggesting faster approaches, not, and notably this PMAP approach, which runs quite fast. A pure base version using the newest uh, base pipe operator, this one, using within and using as apply with as split, very fast. And of course, uh, people also suggested a data table approach, which is the fastest approach I have benchmarked. I didn't use it, uh, and I don't use data tables so much because I just don't know about it. Whenever I need to actually run code fast, whenever I need to, to run this type of thing using data table, what I do is that I use a dtplyr or tidy table, which are these packages that allow you to write tidyverse code, and then it gets kind of translated into uh, data table calls. But this is the fastest one. And here again, I, I, I benchmark it, and you see RunDT is the absolute king. Uh, but the other ones is not so obvious. Uh, it looks like RunMap runs faster, so the one using PMAP, uh, then, then Apply, and, um, and, then, uh, and yeah, then the pure base. But I mean, I guess it depends also on the functions and how, how many runs you do. But DT, super fast. So these two blog posts, um, discuss this in greater detail, but it all came from this function that was very slow and I, I tried to optimize and I got these suggestions and this is why I, I love doing this type of videos and blog posts and tweets because I always get very, very interesting feedback. So thank you. And then selecting the parents, so we evaluate the candidates and then we select them here. Again, base code, there's nothing special here. This is really pure base. Um, some people will find this easier to read some people than this. Some people will not find this easier to read. I think, and this was also part of the discussion on Twitter, I think Tidyverse code is easier to read and easier to understand than base in most, most cases. Um, but that's maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just so, so used to Tidyverse now that, that I think it's, it's easier to read. But it's slower, at least in this case. Then there's the crossover. So here again, with the crossover, nothing special. I, I just use this uh, as split again. And here there's just one problem. Expand grid actually returns a data frame for some weird reason. Even though the input, the parents, is an array, it returns, uh, it returns a data frame. So I had to reconvert it to a matrix. I guess I could have used as array instead of as matrix. But it doesn't really matter. And I guess that's that's it uh, because the rest is quite um, is quite basic base stuff. I mean, there's no not many tricks here that uh, that I needed to use. And then I have my genetic algorithm function. This one is the tidyverse version that just puts everything together. And uh, yeah, I've been recording for eight minutes. That's fine. And then this is the base one that uses the uh, new pipe that is included in R four point one which is also much faster than the uh, tidyverse pipe. Um, and here, an anonymous function, also uh, a new thing in, the, in base R. You could write anonymous functions before, um, but this is a shorthand, and it's uh, it's nice. It's nice to have this type of, of, uh, of syntax, syntactic sugar in the base um, package, base offering, let's say. And, uh, and then this runs, so I benchmark it here. I won't run it because um, the uh, row-wise row runs really slowly, as you can see. Just using PMAP instead of row-wise makes it run almost twice as fast, which is not, not so bad. And then, of course, using base is just the absolute fastest. And again, this is mostly only because of this one function here which is evaluate candidates. 
where I need to compute over rows. So computing over rows is quite slow. Oh, by the way, I use pmap, but I have to use this weird function, liftvd, which is a function included in Perl. And so it's, I think you need really to play with it to understand what it's doing. But the idea is that this takes liftvd, liftvd takes a function as an argument and lifts its domain from vectors to data frames. Okay, so this function over here, objective function, uses a vector as an input. But over here, I want to apply this to a data frame because this dot here is actually a, uh, um, how do you call that? A drop in, I guess, a, a stand in maybe for the data frame population. So this thing is the whole uh, data frame. But because my function over here doesn't work over, over data frames, but over vectors, I need to use lift vd. And there's other ones. There's uh, lift, I guess, also lift dv. Uh, there's, I think, also with lists. So you can go from, v I think there's lift vl. So going from vectors to lists, from lists to vectors and things like that. So this allows you to just you know apply this function over objects for which it wasn't uh, made for, basically. So it's a bit arcane. It's a bit uh, obscure, maybe. Play around a little bit with it. Um, it's quite useful in certain situations, but it's, I would say, highly specialized function. I sometimes I forget about it. So in this case, it was again suggested by someone. I didn't even think about using it. So um, this is like pure functional <laughs> programming type of, uh, of, of stuff. Um, so this runs much faster, much, much faster. Now, there are two things left to do. And I don't know when I will have time because uh, I am, again, very happy to, to be a, a proud father. So I don't have much free time anymore, even less than before. But there's two things I would really like to do. First would be to, as I said before, write this in Julia in a way to learn about Julia, but also to, again, benchmark it, see how fast it can go. And then... I would also like to do that in a uh, data table because uh, it was running, as you saw in these benchmarks, super fast. Uh, it's still the fastest one. So uh, I would be really curious to see how it goes, especially what would be really interesting would be to see, and I don't know if it was going to work, but see if I can use uh, for all of this um, DT plier or tidy table. I don't think it's going to work, though, because these things like row-wise, cross-df, cross etc., I don't think this has been implemented into data, ta uh, I mean, into D DT, plier, or tidy table. So I think I would need to write this in pure data table. And I don't know data table. So this would be another thing that I should learn. It could be quite, uh, quite useful, quite interesting to do. But I think I'm going to focus on the Julia version first, maybe come back to this later. Um, and I have other videos, actually, also, uh, I mean, I have al already written some scripts, so I need to, to just shoot them. But uh, as I said, this might take some time. So, again, I hope you enjoyed, and um, please just, you know, write a comment, give some feedback, give some ideas, give some suggestions. If you see something that uh, could be optimized, go ahead, I will post the code in a gist, so you'll be able to to download it, to play around with it. Um, I've, I've also started a, um, a Rocket Chat server. It's running, literally running up on my Raspberry Pi 4. So if you want to chat a little bit, again, no promises because my schedule is full now. But if you have questions or whatever, you can also uh, directly go into this uh, Rocket Chat instance. No, you don't, you don't need any account, okay? You can write anonymously. It's kind of an experiment. Let's see how it goes. For now, I, I had some message. So two people now have, uh, have written. So it's nice. So go ahead. If you have questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, have a good one.